Good afternoon, everybody. Let me be the first to apologize to you for our late start. I was dealing with some traffic, unexpected traffic at that. Um, but I always believe that we must do everything in our power to respect person's time. And so even though we start late, I will do everything in my power so that we can end within a reasonable time. Is that okay? All right, thank you so, so very much. Please stand to your feet as we begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for being with us, the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we invite and we invoke your presence. We ask, Lord, that as we bask in the ambience of your glory, that all of us and our lives will be changed and transformed as a result of who you are. Those of us who are broken and grieving, we ask for the consoling power of the Holy Ghost to rest on their lives at this time and their hearts. Impact them in such a profound way that they will yield to your every word. In Jesus' mighty name, let God's people say, Amen. Please remain standing as we do our entrance hymn. It is well with my soul. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well. The third stanza, my sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed, is nailed to the cross, and I bear. singing. You guys can be a choir. Uh, that was beautiful singing. Please have your seats this afternoon at this time. 
I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to the funeral service of our dear brother Paul Randolph Vernil. On behalf of the Rambalis Funeral Parlor, on behalf of my churches, on behalf of my family, my wife and my daughter, we would like to extend our deepest and most profound condolences to all the family members and those who are grieving at this time. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. At this time, I invite Alvina Reynolds to do for us the eulogy. Pastor. Good afternoon, everyone. Instead of a eulogy, I would like to think of it as a tribute to our dear Paul Vonnie. Dear family, loved ones, and especially my dear friend Petro, it is an honor to deliver this tribute to dear Paul, who was such a wonderful soul a distinguished gentleman in my eyes. Paul Vernet hailed from the Republic of Library, specifically on Martin Luther Street, on this same street with the president of Library, or the current representative, the Honorable Alva Baptiste. Alva told me so and he has asked me to extend warm and deep condolences to your family and loved ones. His mom, children, dear wife Petra, siblings who are here present, and those who are following on the live stream, and good friends. Paul came from a community that I love. A community which produced great solutions, like the deceased Wayne Lee, former president of the National Youth Council, Mrs. Agafa Japanel, a great school principal, and the former MP and lawyer, Mr. Velon John. Jababono, Jean Sassin, Paul Vonet came from a topper, topper community. Growing up among the distinguished sons and daughters of St. Lucia. So no wonder he carried himself like that. He was a distinguished gentleman. He was multi-talented, the Paul I knew. Multi-skilled, flexible, and able to engage in various professions. As I understood, he did joinery. He served as a special reserve police officer for the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. He worked at the management level with Texaco and Narubis, stationed at the George F. L. Charles Airport Aviation Department. After official retirement, he got involved in farming. At some point, Paul got hooked on Babono. I cannot tell exactly the date, but during one of his drive throughs he spotted his dear wife, Petra, whom he referred to very early as the Shabin under the breadfruit tree. I would never have known that Paul had so much chat because I saw him and knew him to be so quiet. But Petra told me, oh yes, he did have chat. He only sometimes appeared quiet. His adopted daughter, Sherlon, described Paul as a very helpful, very reserved, and this is what I knew of him, not much of a talker, but when he opened up, he would share jokes about his past experiences, and he would end it with, man, not Paul again. 
She also indicated that Paul did not really celebrate birthdays, but he was always the first to wish them happy birthday and surprise people with a gift. I am sure his large family would attest to that, that side of him as well. I know I can attest to that. He would surprise with a gift when you never expected such sweet kindness. That was Paul. Paul took his politics very seriously and his farming as well. We would have some deep discussions about the political climate in St. Lucia. On the agriculture side, he and my mother were buddies. There seemed to always be an exchange of gifts between Paul and my mother. And when I talk about gifts, I meant produce from the plots. My mom's neighbor also loved Paul like my mom did. So he felt at home driving up to my mom's yard to deliver goods. One day, however, my mom was not in when Paul arrived with his goodies. He did not want to drop it at the front of her house or in the veranda, so very considerate as he was. He decided to place the heavy bunch of plantain on the side near the kitchen door for my mom because he did not want to give her the trouble of carrying it over. Well, our dear Paul got the shock of his life when mama's dogs made such a riot and even if they had gotten loose, they would eat Paul alive. He escaped, thank God, and went home to tell Petra how the dogs almost ate him up. I am sure he must have said, like Sheldon describes, man, not Paul again, not with those dogs. My mom would often show me the big plantain, macabo, green fig bunches, and proudly say, see what my friend brought? When I inquired, which friend? She would say, Petra's husband. That's how she called him, right through to the end. I popped in to see Paul one Sunday afternoon, and he got out of bed and was about to hug her, but we checked ourselves. COVID, that prevented that final hug. We bumped elbows. That was our last encounter as we spoke of politics and many other things. But Petra conveyed my love to Paul day in and day out. Today, as I stand here to bid farewell and pay tribute to a dear, sweet, quiet, considerate, handsome, kind, gentle, giant of a man, Paul Vonnie. I must salute Petra, his wife, who demonstrated strength and courage while enduring much pain. Today, I honor this woman, Paul Shabin for helping Paul through. I know he felt your love throughout. Thanks to the Bonet family, the children, his dear mom, the Louis family, Linda, the big brother, who carried Petra, Shalan and Keisha, who carried and Grace, who carried Petra through it all. Because of your love, family, and because of God's love, Petra was able to share love with Paul. I admired that even when I was a little anxious to hear what's up the next day and the next day, even Petra's strength lifted me. Rest in the arms of the angels, dear Paul. Watch over us and pray for us, dear soldier as our battle continues here on earth, as we fight for everything good, and you and your party know we fight for bread, freedom, justice.
Adios, Paul. Till we meet again. Thank you, everyone. Come on, you can do better than that. I was, I was very profound. Thank you, Miss Reynolds, for that moving tribute. We now would invite Felina Lewis to do for us a prayer. Please stand to your feet with us as we pray. We thank you, dear Jesus, for bringing us here safely. We thank you for traveling mercies. We thank you for who you are. Oh, Father, we thank you for the way you have taken this family through during this trying time. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. We pray for every family member that are present here, both here and overseas, dear Father. I pray you'll be with each and every one of them, dear Father, those that are at their home, dear Father. Due to circumstances, dear Father, you cannot be here. I pray you'll be with them likewise, dear Jesus. You will be with his dear mom, Father God. I pray you give her the strength, the courage. You will hold her, dear Father, for your victorious right, and you will comfort her, dear Master. I present his dear wife in thy care and keeping also, dear Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, you will give her the strength, the courage you need, Father God. You will comfort her, dear Jesus. You will uphold her, dear Lord. You will provide for her what she cannot provide for herself, dear Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, you will fill that empty space death has put in this family. Fill this space with your presence of your Holy Spirit, dear Father. Let your will be done. Let your name be praised. Let your name be glorified, dear Father. And help each and every one of us, dear Father, to live a life that is pleasing in your sight. So that when Mr. Death knock on our door, it will be well with our soul. Until the end, dear Father, we pray why you may keep us true, keep us faithful, keep us in thy care and keeping, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. 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 Please be seated in the presence of God. Thank you. This time, our scripture reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 4. And it says this, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And verse 4 says, And God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Would you say amen? Amen. For the next few minutes, I want to speak to you on the, or rather the text, Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4. from verses 31 and 32. It 
says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise today for just being such an awesome God. For loving us even when we seemed unlovable. For being there for us even when we are broken. And so God, we ask at this time that your Holy Ghost would rest upon us and give us the peace that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I may say once again, it's a pleasant good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I forgot to tell you that my name is Rod Rennie, that is Rod, R-O-D, as in the Rod of Moses. A couple of years ago, we were confronted with the reality, brothers and sisters, of the painful news that our bright star in St. Lucia, by the name of Botham Jah, sat in his apartment eating some ice cream when an officer out of the blue saying that the apartment she entered was well, she thought that it was her apartment she walked in thinking that young Botham was an intruder shot him dead What is intriguing about that story, brothers and sisters, is that this garnered national attention, and dare I say international attention. And the narrative that a white officer shot a black boy quickly spread throughout the entire world. We cried as a nation because Botham is one of our was one of our bright stars and doing well. Not just the fact that he was part of a prominent family, but the fact that he was really a profound personality. We all shed in the pain of the Jars as they had to bury their son. About a year later, at the trial of the police officer Amber Geiger. The world witnessed, dare I say, one of the most beautiful expressions of forgiveness that I have ever seen. Now let me be very frank and honest with the church and say to you, beloved, that while she sat on that stand and while she sat in that room, I was waiting and hoping that this woman would have received life in prison and throw away the key. I don't know how you felt, but that's how I felt. I was angry because these folks always get away with those types of things. And then I was quickly brought back to the faith that I profess as a believer when Botham's brother sat on the stand and made a declaration that moved me to my core. He said, I don't want you to go to jail. That I don't even want you to go to jail and both of them would not want you. I said, what? Uh, young man, what are you saying that? Really? He said, I don't want you to go to jail. He said, that's not what both of them would have wanted. And then out of the blue, beloved friends, he declared, can I give her a hug? If that was not enough, the judge allowed him to hug the woman that killed his brother. There are some things I'm learning in my life and in my experience 
before I die, I want to be able to master those things. And today I want to share with you very quickly, brothers and sisters, the things that I believe that we must master before we die. And hopefully, brothers and sisters, those things, those things would allow us to be able to live a different type of life, would make life more meaningful, if you please. The first one, and I alluded to it this, this, this afternoon, the first thing is I've discovered, brothers and sisters, that we must forgive and learn to forgive those who have done us wrong. Can I tell you and be very honest with the church and say to you this afternoon that I have learned, brothers and sisters, that the more I decide that I am not forgiving is the more pain I put on myself. I have realized the more I hold on to grudges in this life is the more pain I cause myself. The better or the sooner I learn to forgive those who have done me wrong, brothers and sisters, is the sooner I become delivered from the anger and rage that is in my heart. All by the amen. This got me, Master. By the amen. Amen. Uh, am I speaking the truth? Amen. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. You see, because what I've discovered, I've discovered that we are living in a society, brothers and sisters, where folks prefer to hold on to grudges and to be vengeful and to deal with those grudges in that way. But I realize that that, that is not what God has called us to. God says, "Forgive those who have done you wrong." Yeah. As painful as it is, and let me tell you something. Let me and if I have to be very frank and honest with us brothers and sisters, sometimes whatever it is that they do to you is so painful that you just wish that you had a means and a way to just deal with them right on the spot. But I have realized, brothers and sisters, that the more I hold on to that pain that, or the pain of unforgiveness or the pain of that grudge is the more I live a life of bitterness and anger. And let me tell you something I've discovered in my life that I'm not giving anybody that type of power over my life. To think that I would spend my life in a corner crying over what you did to me. What you did to me was painful, but I want you to understand that I've learned to forgive what you have done to me and I will let God deal with you. Amen. You didn't hear the preacher. Amen. Because we are we are living in this type of society where we perpetuate, or rather, a society that proliferates hate. I realize, brothers and sisters, that the more time I spend hating others, the more time I waste when I could be doing something else. That's why I do not engage in unnecessary arguments. Because I realize that I have only one life. Like, see my, see my spend tea time when like a be over there. Oh, you didn't have to preach our body, man. <laughs> uh, watch the thing here. If I spend all my time arguing over non-essentials in this life, I would be wasting the one life that God has given to me. And the beauty about this thing, brothers and sisters, is simply this. When one learns and understands two things, the value of life and the value of time, he will be, he will, he will be more con uh, conservative with how he spends his time. Because you only have but a short time on this planet. Some of us think that we have, we have all the time in the world. That's why I have learned to respect people's time. That if I am late, I want persons to know that I'm very apologetic about lateness because I respect your time. Because none of us are guaranteed eternality on this side of life. We have only but a short time. And can I be honest with you and say to you that you don't know when your time is going to come? Or oh, oh, oh wait. And let me say this to you as well, that money and fame and education does not guarantee you more time. I wish I had the opportunity to be able to negotiate with death so that I can have some more time. I don't know about you, but I don't want to die yet. Me too. Oh, buddy, oh. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I, I'm not yet ready to go. As a matter of fact, I've been, I've been arguing with God and saying to God, listen, I have a young wife and a young daughter. Can you give me enough time to make at least three more children, please? 
Can, can you give me enough time to be able to serenade the wife of my youth so that I can, I can enjoy her to the fullest? Can you give me enough time? But here is what I realize. I realize, beloved friends, that God does not negotiate with us that way and neither does death. When death is ready, it just shows up. And you have absolutely no choice but to respond. And it can show up while you're sleeping, it can show up while you're walking, it can show up, brothers and sisters, while you're having a good time, it can show up on your anniversary, it can show up on your birthday, you have absolutely no mm, time to negotiate with death, which tells me that what matters in this world is not when I die, or how I die, but how I live question to you this afternoon is how are you living the one life that you have so the first thing I want you to master this morning is to forgive those who have done you wrong some of you are sitting here today oh fashi tell my ex-husband oh my oh, church got awfully quiet when I said that that there are some of us who are so angry with our ex-wife there are some of us who are so angry with our business partners and we are holding on to those crutches and holding on to that anger and living in bitterness. But can I tell you, you still here today. You went through what they dished at you and you're still in the house of God today. Can I tell you that God still has your back? Did you hear the preacher? Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. He left you destitute after the after 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 the divorce. He went to Lajan to buy and he left you destitute. And you still have today. Thank God! You didn't have the preacher. Yeah. Left you. She left you for another man, a man younger than you, boy. And you still have today. Thank God for just being here today. You didn't have the preacher. Some of us have gone through things so tumultuous and so dark that we never thought that we'd be able to sit in this room today but you're here so forgive those who have done you wrong the second thing i want you to know is that trials don't last always what do i mean by that i mean that trials don't last forever and here is what I realized in my young life, and can I be very honest with you and tell you that I've been through some trials. I have gone through some things. Some I brought on myself, some I didn't. But I've been through trials so heavy in this life that death seemed like a better option. I, I don't know if you're listening to the preacher this afternoon, but, 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 but I've, I've been through some things that would cause me to even question my own existence. But here is what I realized, brothers and sisters. I realized that the trials in this life, they are not meant to break you, they are meant to build you. Okay, okay, the church did get that. Let me say it again. I said the trials of this life are not meant to break you, they are meant to build you. There are some of us who are going through trials at this time. COVID took away your money, took away everything that you worked for, and you're just you're just going through something difficult. Uh, difficult. Can I tell you this morning, this afternoon, brothers and sisters, that these trials are meant to build you because when you come out of it, you will be a better person. Amen. You'll be a better person after it. Some of you go to your pillows every night and you cry. Wet the pillow because you cannot fathom how someone can go through what you're going through and still survive. Uh, you cannot feed your children the way you want to. You cannot pay your mortgage the way you want to. You cannot put fuel in your car the way you want to. You are high on drugs every single day. You want to take a spliff at every second of your life. You are wasting your life away. You're going through things so tumultuous. And you believe that life is just not worth it. I want to say to you this afternoon that you're almost at the end of your trial. And when you come out of it, you will be a better person. As a matter of fact, you will be able to tell someone who is going through the same thing and that I, I, I went through it because God was with me. I went through it and, I, and, and because I went through it, so can you.
whatever that trial is, as heavy as it is. Some of us for years we are walking around with low self-esteem, need the validation of others to build us. And for years you are walking around with that burden. The trials of this life are not meant to break you, they are meant to build you. Finally this morning from me, this afternoon, sorry, I want to tell you that the third thing you must master before you die is that you must learn to love without limits. Can I tell you what I mean by that? I have realized that the most powerful force God gave to humanity is love. When someone can tell that you love them, you can get anything from them. When you know that that person loves you. The challenge we have in the world today, the Bible predicted it, that, that in the last days, the love of men will, will wax cold. In other words, person's heart will become so hard that they will not know the beauty of love. To be able to look at the person in this room and to be able to look at your friend or your mother, your sister, your father, and tell them, I love you. Many of us will not even venture to tell someone how much we love them. But here's what I realize, brothers and sisters. I realize that before I die, I need everybody who loves me to tell me that you love me. Because when I die, I cannot hear your love or see it. I cannot experience it because when I die, there is nothing you can say to me that I can hear. And let me tell you why my perception of this changed when I, when I died, when my father died six years ago. I realized, brothers and sisters, that throughout his life, he never used those words with his son and his sons or his children and say that, pull them aside and say, Robert, I love you, Robert, I love you, my, uh, my sisters, my, uh, my sons, my daughters, I love you, never, not once. And I realized I love this man so bad. And I was never able to tell him those three words. But today, you have an opportunity to tell someone <laughs> that you loved him. Paul knows how much he loved him while he was on earth. But I'm sure that he would tell you, keep the spirit of love flowing among yourselves. Because when you lose that person, you can never tell them how much you love them. And I said to you earlier on that you only have one life. So rather than spending our one life fighting over nothing, can we spend our life loving a little more? Amen. There are some of us who need to go home and to just grab our sons and our daughters and tell them, boy, you didn't hear the preacher. <laughs> uh, tell your daughters, you know what? I, th th there are different things I expected from you, but one thing I don't want you to ever doubt is that you love me, is that I love you, sorry. I want the husbands to go home and grab their wives. What's it normal, guy? Amen. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go and grab her and just pull her close to you. And um, while you do that, I want you to put on some Teddy Pendergrass. <laughs> Teddy Pendergrass has this song, Turn off the lights, <laughs> let's light a candle. So wait, just, just put that on a little bit and just look her square in the eye. No, I'm talking some real stuff. You, you, Usafa, she is But I, I prefer to be as honest with my people as possible. Pull her close to you and just tell her, I may not have been the best husband all the time, but I love you. Not just say it, but make sure that you live it.
if we could love a little more, our society would be a better place. And can I tell you that you don't need to know someone to love them? Can I tell you that, that I don't have to know you to love you? I, I just have to know you exist for me to love you. Uh, I, wish, I wish COVID did not put us so far apart, but Miss Reynolds, I, I, I love you. You, 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 you gotta understand, I don't have to know you. I just have to know you exist. And I, 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 oh, bless your heart. You have to be able, beloved friends, to treat persons with the same type of love and respect that you want. Because when all of us find ourselves in this little box, there is no turning back. Share the love, show the love, and live the love. God bless you, everybody. God bless you. At this time, I will invite those who are scheduled to sign the register to meet me on this side. And while we are doing so, we will sing the hymn, Heaven's Not My Home. I'm not familiar with it. If someone can assist us, <clears throat> heaven's not my.
I would rather live my life as though there is a God, die and find out there isn't, than to live my life as though there is no God, die and find out that there is. When you live your life for God, you can never lose or ever be at a loss. Amen. So may you seek God in all that you do. Please stand to your feet with me, everybody. Once again, may God, or the God of peace and comfort, be with all of you as you navigate through this difficult period in your life. May God bless you all. Bow your heads with us as we pray. Father in heaven, we have come to know the powerful, or rather the potency of love, the potency of forgiveness, and the meaning of trials today. And these are all things that we can understand as human beings. These are things that you can place within our mind to understand and not just understand but to be able to emulate and to be able to uh, share with others so that they can feel and know and understand God that you are a God of love, a God of forgiveness, a God of grace, a God who is able to give us strength in the midst of all of our broken moments. And so Lord take full charge and control of every life in this room. Be with them and bless them. Give them peace and courage and hope. Knowing God that none of us can tell what day or time we will die. And so while we have life on this planet, may we live it to the fullest under God and with the Holy Spirit. May we live our lives serving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And may everything that we do bring honor and glory unto your name. In Jesus' mighty and most holy name, let God's people say, Amen. 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 I believe that is uh, is being cremated, right? It's cremated. Yes. Okay. So uh, there will be no cemetery at the end. Uh, again, family members, God bless you. Let us sing our recessional hymn. As we sing our recessional hymn, we are just uh, going to simply ask you. Uh, Casket will be remaining here as far as I can remember until they are ready to, to transport it to its final uh, place of cremation. The song says, Precious Lord. Say that again. Oh, sure. It's not on the leaflet, but we can. Yes, sure. 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 This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. Somewhere beyond the blue.